Lads, ladies, how's it going? I am going to be bringing you guys the like most comprehensive like weapon building guide that I can think of. I'm going to go through pretty much every gun that's, you know, of relevance in EFT. And I'm going to show you guys from level one to level four traders. What's the best way to mod the guns or the ways that I like to mod my guns. And I'm just going to show you guys step by step like level to level exactly what I do with my guns and how I mod them. We're going to be starting with the AK-74N because it is going to be one of the most used kind of early game guns. Uh, you can get lucky, get them off scavs early game, you can get them off other players. A lot of people actually start with this gun from their Edge of Darkness edition. I'm not sure if the other editions have the AK as a starter gun. They, they probably do. I, I just I'm not sure. But the AK-74N is always going to be one of the staple rifles in EFT. There will never be a time and a place where an AK-74N isn't going to be used. So, coming in at level 1 traders, um, there isn't really a whole lot you can do with the 74N. Now, you know, fair enough, level 1 traders, you're not supposed to be able to do much with them. But what you can do uh, is put this little EKP sight on there, which comes from Propor. So at least you have an optic. You're not looking through iron sights. So... That just slaps right on there, straight onto the 74N. That's it, ready to go. You're out the door with that setup, uh, and you just have your little optic ready to go. There are other options too, so I'm just going to take the EKP off there for the time being. You can get a TT 10,000 rail from your boy Skier, sorry, level 1. Skier level 1 down here trades for a single horse figurine. So early game, always hold on to your horse figurines. These TT 10,000 rails are super handy. And I'm going to show you guys why. The TT 10,000 rail just slaps onto your dust cover. So it just goes right on there. And then on top of that dust cover, you can slap a PK-06 from level 1 skier. If you happen to find an optic in game, like a Bravo scope or an Elkin or something like that in your raids, well, guess what? You have a TT 10,000, you can slap the Elkin right on it too. And you're out the door, ready to go. Uh, but we're not really going to uh, talk about, you know, stuff you can find in raid or, you know, that kind of stuff. We're just going to try and focus on, like, the trader stuff. We're not going to get, like, too crazy with it. I'm going to really be aiming this at, like, people who are new to EFT uh, that are kind of struggling with the, the gun modding side of things. Because this is very complex for new players coming into it. So the next thing that you can grab here is one of these little Cobra mounts. I believe this is Propor level one. I never actually use these, uh, nor do I usually recommend using them. But hey, if it's all you got you know, you might as well have it. It's better than using iron sights in some cases. The Cobra mount is from, let's see. Okay, I realized why I couldn't find the Cobra mount on the traders. It's actually sold out. But this sells from level one Propor. I do believe it's either level one Propor or level one Skier. But you can grab this Cobra mount. You can throw it on, same as the EKP. And then you can just throw your optic on top of it there. Uh, if you don't happen to have access to the TT 10,000 route. So there you go. That's pretty much all you can do with the traders at level one. Um, I personally, I believe that this is the best combo. The TT 10,000 rail with the PK-06. That's probably going to be your best bet. If you don't have any horse statues, just throw an EKP on there. It'll be fine. And yeah, you can't put these on at the same time because the TT 10K conflicts with it, but you wouldn't want two of them anyway. All right. So now we're going to dive a little bit deeper. We're going to, we're going to start getting a little bit more comprehensive with what we're doing here. So we've moved on to primarily level two skier here is going to be kind of your main dude for a lot of your early game ak attachments uh a lot of these attachments are actually still used by a lot of people even towards the end game so like a lot of this stuff is really relevant one of the main things is that skier starts selling the tt 10,000 rails at level two so if we go over here to level two skier you can see he sells the tactical tool at 10,000 rails for three and a half thousand rubles right there which is nice uh, so you'll just be able to buy these instead of having to look for horse statues. So the first thing we're going to focus on is the muzzle brake. So this bit here comes off your front little compensator that comes stock on the gun. And then the DTK1 muzzle brake can go on there. That's going to provide you with a decent bit of recoil reduction. Uh, you also have the introduction of the hollow sun, uh, which is an optic that actually has a built in laser. So you don't have to buy a separate laser to mount on your uh, your handguard. Uh, other things that you can do at level 2 as well is remove the stock and buy one of these PT1s with the AKM locks. You can put that on there so you've got a different stock to the default. The regular stock has 37% minus to the recoil. And then the PT stock has a 44% minus to the recoil. So you're getting more recoil reduction then. 
So what we're going to do then is we're just going to do a little ergonomics buff. We're going to remove the pistol grip and put on the RK3. The RK3 just provides like plus 13 to the ergonomics. So for those of you that don't know, the ergonomics kind of improves the speed at which your kind of weapon handles. Um, so if you want to get more ergonomics over recoil, you can do that to raise your weapon slightly faster and have it kind of function a little bit quicker. Or you can focus more on recoil and then obviously, you know, have your gun shoot as straight as possible. So moving on then, we're going to go to the 74N. We're going to remove this part down here, which is just the wooden handguard. If you remove this part here, you're actually removing the gas block from the AK. So this, this bit here is like combined with the gas block. So you want to just remove the wooden handguard part. We're going to take that off there. And then we're going to get the B10M, which is also sold by Skier. We're just going to slide that on there. Now, what the B10M is going to allow us to do is put on one of these BVG grips. You can either use the BVG or you can use the RK1 grip. So the BVG is minus 1.5% uh, to the recoil and the RK1 is a minus 4 to recoil with a plus 4 to ergonomics. The BVG is 1.5 with plus 6 to ergonomics. So it's up to you. Decide whichever one of those you would like to run yourself. Personally, I would go with the RK1 just because it gives you lower recoil. Having lower recoil is always the best. Um, other things you can also do is add one of these little RP1 bolts. All that's going to do is add a little bit more ergonomics to the gun. Not really too much to worry about. If you want to save your pennies, then don't bother buying it. Um, and then, of course, you know, the TT 10K rail. And then you can put your hollow sun on top of there, your PK06 on top of there. Also, this, uh, this hand guard, you can also mount optics on the front of it. So what I generally tend to do a lot early wipe is i'll actually run the optic on the front of my gun don't know why a lot of people will either run it on the dust cover or they'll run it on the handguard uh it's kind of up to you it's it's really down to personal preference uh i somewhat enjoy having the sight at the end of the gun i don't know just just for a change but it always worked out really well for me so if you don't want to bother buying tt 10k rails every time you're modding an ak just throw it on the handguard It'll be fine. It functions more or less the exact same anyway. Uh, and then the next big thing is this PSO scope right here. This PSO scope cannot go on if you have a TT 10,000 rail. It will conflict. You cannot do that. So you can just slap the PSO scope on there. Early game, you might want to buy these off the flea market because it is locked behind one of Prapor's tasks, I believe. Uh, you get that PSO scope from level 2 Prapor. Everything else that I've shown you that goes onto this AK is pretty much from level 2 Skier. So already at level 2 skier, you've got an AK with 48 vertical recoil and 136 horizontal recoil. Doing pretty good. That's a pretty well modded gun for level 2. Like you can get level 2 super quickly. You can get that in a couple of days if you're a casual player. If you're like myself and you like to grind out the levels super fast, you'll have this in a couple of hours. So the only thing that's going to set you back is every time you get one of these AKs, of course, you know, it's going to cost you money to mod these early game. That might be money that you want to save for buying quest items off the flea market or for purchasing meds, you know, once you unlock them and stuff like that. So uh, I'm just going to take this PSO scope off real quick and just put on this just to show you. This this is another uh, scope mount that you can use. I generally don't really recommend these, but some people like them, so I just thought I'd put it in. So same deal as the Cobra. You know, you can put whatever you want on top of it, you know, whatever optics you find, but... I generally don't like running these. I feel like they throw off the aim of the rifle and I, I personally find them quite off-putting to use. So I would I would generally recommend just going with the TT10K or TT10K or putting the sight on the front of your handguard. Uh, so that's pretty much it for level two traders. The uh the level three traders. We're starting to get we're starting to get super late game here now. We're starting to get towards the really, really nice things. So the first thing that we're going to have a look at is a stock that pretty much everybody runs. You know, it could likely be for looks, but it turns out that the UAS AK stock is a little bit better uh, than the MOE setup with the ME4 adapter. It's also a little bit less complicated, but I do get people asking me all the time, oh, how do you get the buffer tube like onto your AK? You know, how do I run an MOE stock on my AK? So you have to buy one of these little ME4 adapters from level three skier. You just throw that onto your AK, you grab your CST buffer tube, throw that on there too. Your MOE stock goes on top of the buffer tube and then your rubber butt pad goes right onto the back of it as well. So just by adding 
the stock we're looking at 57 recoil uh for the vertical and then 161 horizontal recoil so if we remove this entire thing along with the uh the adapter and we put on the uas ak stock we're down to 54 and 152 so you're actually getting lower recoil across the board with the uas uh so we're up to 54 and 152 yeah 54 and 152 compared to 57 and 161. So generally, it's just easier to go to skier level 3. And instead of buying the buffer tube, the MOE stock, and all that other stuff, you can just go down here and buy one of these Fab Defense UAS stocks. Uh, it does end up being a little bit more expensive, but it's not it's not really it's not really anything crazy. Honestly, for newer players, I would suggest just buying this Fab Defense stock. It would just be super easy for level 3 just to throw a decent stock on there. So, moving on from the stocks, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the pistol grip. And I'm just going to show you guys uh, the other pistol grip that you can buy from level 3 mechanic when you get that, which is this one here, the Magpul MOE pistol grip for the AK. We're just going to buy one of those, put that on there. So you can either run with this or the RK3 AK pistol grip from level 2 skier. Uh, there's not really a whole huge difference between these. You get like an extra point in ergonomics for the Magpul one. It's it's not really like... It's nothing game-breaking. At, at this point, it's down to like, you know, how do you prefer your gun to look, really? So I'm just going to leave... I'm just going to leave the MOE one on there just for the sake of it. And then we're going to move on to what we can put on the front of our gun, which is the end, you know, that everybody likes. You know, nice suppressors and things. So I'm going to remove the stock... Uh, Muzzle break off here, and then we have a couple of options here. We got the PWS CQB7, which is a... I'm pretty sure this is the best compensator in the game for the AKs. So you're looking at minus 11% recoil, minus 1 to ergonomics, 0.5 to muzzle velocity. This thing is a beast. A lot of people just run these. Uh, they're really, really good. They're really, really cheap, and they'll add a lot of recoil reduction to your gun. So you can run those if you like. You also have the PBS4 suppressor, which Propor sells. Show you the stats on this real quick. Minus 2 to accuracy, minus 5% to the recoil, minus 7 to the ergonomics. So yeah, as you can see, the suppressors are definitely worse in the gun performance department. But, you know, it's more tactical. You got a silenced gun. And then you've got the TPGA, which I believe, yeah. Yeah, the PBS suppressor is better, but hey, look, if you happen to find a TP or a TGPA suppressor in raid, you can throw it on your gun. You know, you can just throw it onto the end of your AK. Bear in mind that if you do have this part here, which comes by default on the AK-74Ns, you won't be able to put a suppressor on there. You have to take that off. So moving on to the next combination of stuff that you can use here. We're going to, again, take off just the wooden part of the handguard. We're just going to put that over there. And this bit here, the CAA RS47 foregrip, this is a foregrip that I used forever. I used this for a very, very, very long time. And the other grip that I used to use with it is this one here, the Magpul RVG grip uh, from your boy Peacekeeper. Uh, this is what I used to run here all the time. So you can run this RVG on there. It's going to give you a sizable reduction in recoil. Just going to compare these to the other one that you can get from skier so there's the viking tactical which gives you minus 1.2 percent recoil reduction and plus seven to ergonomics or you can buy the one from peacekeeper and you can get minus two recoil and plus seven to ergonomics so i would just suggest using the rvg uh it's it's one of the best in the game a lot of people still use these so that is going to be your best bet the rvg so then for lasers i mean there's a bunch of other things you can put on there. If you would just like to use flashlights or something like that, go for it. Me personally, I always run laser sights. So your laser sight, when you throw it onto your gun by default, will go on top. I like to just move it one slot sideways to the next tactical slot so it's on the left side of the gun. That's just how I like to run it. You can run it wherever you like. It doesn't matter. You can run it on top if you want. Uh, you can run it there if you like. You can run it on the other side of the gun if you want. It's totally up to you. Um... Yeah, that is all down to personal preference. So I'm going to take the laser sight off there real quick. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the whole CAA uh, RS-47 off there. And we're going to put on one of these MOEs. Uh, so these MOEs are pretty cool. 
uh, they also provide a lot of recoil reduction. So with these MOEs, you have to use the AFG M-Locks. These are the ones from level 3 Skier. These are the only ones that will fit onto these particular MOE handguards. Uh, there's also MOE rails that you can get from your boy mechanic. Where are they? They're either level 2 or they're level 3. There it is there. The Magpul M-Lock 2.5 inch guide. So you can buy one of these from level 2 mechanic. You can throw that on there and then you'll be able to throw your laser onto it. Just like that. So that's really nice. That just came in this patch. Uh, as for everything else, uh, there was one other thing. Like you can buy this butt pad from Propor and just throw it onto the back of your 74N if you like. Totally up to you. Uh, doesn't really provide as much recoil reduction as anything else. These used to be super OP and then it got nerfed into the floor. So that's just another option. If you want to run that, it's totally up to you. Uh, but those are pretty much the main things that I would use on my AK. And bear in mind, guys, these AK attachments kind of stretch all across the board. Like, most of these attachments are all interchangeable, except for 74Ms. So I will go over that uh, when I mod up a 74M in the future. It'll just be like, I'll just add to it like the, the end of a video or the end of this video. I'll just throw in the 74M and I'll show you the couple of nuances that are there for those that would be different from the 74N. So I'm just going to take that off there, put that on there, and then there you go. Obviously, you can either use the front-sided mount for the CAA RS-47, or you can just grab your tactical tool at 10K rail, put that on there, throw your optic on top of it, and off you go. The reason why I haven't shown this rail off, and some people might be wondering, these Zenit B33 dust covers, you can use these too. It adds ergonomics, uh, but some of the front grips, the handguards are incompatible with them uh i never really use these anyway uh but it's up to you if you want to figure out combinations that work for you you can go ahead and use these zenith b33 dust covers from level two skier but i always just recommend people to just buy the tt 10k rails it's just it's just easier all across the board not a whole lot to show you guys here this handguard here is from level four mechanic so i'm just going to pull this wooden bit off the handguard here again i'm just gonna slide that right on there and then what you want to do is go to level two peacekeeper, grab one of these six inch rails and go up here and buy one of these two inch guides as well. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to slap those on there. And what the six inch rail is going to allow you to do is put one of these CQR grips on it. So these CQR grips are really, really good. You were never able to put these on AKs before this handguard was introduced. So a lot of people have been running these CQR grips. Um, it provides minus four recoil plus 10 to ergonomics. There's also the new Zenit RK14 grip on the B25U mount. Uh, these honestly, like the, this one's better. The CQR is better, but like this thing is just so much fun because it looks like you're holding, you know, a light machine gun. So I'll just run these a lot just because they're fun to use. It looks cool. Uh, and then you also have the RK2 as well. So the RK2 actually provides the most recoil reduction, but it also gives you the least in ergonomics. So generally, I would either run with the CQR or I would run with the RK1. Or sorry, not the RK1. Yeah, sorry, the RK1. And I will use the RK2 if I don't have any euros or I don't have any of these saved up or, you know, I've bought my buy limit of these uh, four grips. Uh, I'll just buy these instead. Like it's it's not really that big a deal. You're sacrificing some ergonomics for more recoil reduction. It's at the end of the day, we're kind of getting down to personal preference uh, levels of customization here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the stock off here. I'm also going to take that off there. I'm going to take off the pistol grip as well. We're going to put our MOE on there. We're also going to grab our ME4 adapter with our MOE stock on it because this is how I would run it. I'm going to put the CQR on there. It does clip into the mag a little bit. They need to fix that. Uh, I'm also going to grab the, uh, what's this called again? The PWS compensator from level three skier. I'm going to put my tactical tooler rail on there. Then I'm going to grab my PK-06, put that on top of the rifle. Um, and honestly, I got to take off this and just grab a 60 rounder real quick because it just doesn't do it justice with that stupid looking mag in there. <laughs> so here is your super end game AK. Now, the interesting thing is we're down to 45 recoil on the vertical and 127 on the horizontal. Lads, it's not really that much different from a stock AK-74N now, is it? 
It is a little bit different. It looks a whole hell of a lot cooler, but the differences in stats, it's not huge. There is a little bit of a difference. There's probably a noticeable difference, but you don't have to break the bank to go modding these things and make them really useful and really effective. Uh, at the end of the day, it's down to personal preference and what your, your cash stack will allow you to do with your guns. For me personally, like I'm a sucker for the looks of guns. I like my guns to look really cool. It's kind of, it kind of does it for me. Um, but, you know, there's other combinations of weapons that you can bring out that, you know, they might look like complete shit, but it will be totally effective. So, uh, what I've shown you guys here is just kind of how to mod it more than how you should mod it. I'm just showing you guys the options of everything that you could do with the 74N. So, do with the information that I have given you what you will. I hope this has helped some new players figure out how to mod these guns early game. Uh, do remember as well that all of this stuff can be bought off the flea market. If you've made a ton of money early, you can buy a lot of this stuff off the flea market. The only difference with the 74M, if you want to put the stock on it, you just have to go to level 2 skier. Go down here, buy one of these Senate PT3 Classica stocks, and then buy an AK-74 or AK-100 PT lock. And buying both of these, you put the PT lock on the back where the MOE adapter would go. And then you put the Zenit Classica stock on there. And then you're ballin'. They're basically modded the exact same way once it gets to end game. Most of the attachments are all interchangeable between the 74M and the 74N. Uh, also, the same goes for the AKMs, which are... Let me just grab one here. I have a Vepper here, but it's basically the same thing. The only real differences with the Vepers and the AKM variants of guns is that at level 4 mechanic, or sorry, level 4 peacekeeper, you want to buy the Zenits, or sorry, the Zukov stock. Uh, this is the best stock that you can use on these guns, pretty much. 49% recoil reduction, 11 to ergonomics. It's a really great stock. Also, as far as the suppressor goes, you got to go to level... Uh, they might actually be sold out right now. I'm pretty sure it's level 2 mechanic. Yeah, I don't see it here. It must be sold out. Level 2 mechanic. Oh, no, there it is there. The uh, Tactical Tula AK and AKM adapter. You can buy these from level 2 mechanic. And then go ahead and buy this Zenit DTK4M muzzle brake uh, suppressor. Uh, and you can throw that onto your AKMs and your Vepers. And these provide a lot of recoil reduction as well. They also look really cool, but they're also really expensive. So that's pretty much a summary on how to mod the AKs, AKMs, uh, AK74N, M, and the like Vepers, uh, AKMs, AKMNs. For the AKMNs, you can put the PSO sites on them and the OKPs. If it has the N on it, it means it's compatible with the OKPs and the PSO scopes. If it doesn't, then you can't put those on there, but there's plenty of other options for optics anyway. So guys, I hope you enjoyed part one of this. I'm going to continue the series. I'm going to show you how to mod all of the other guns in the game. Some videos will be quicker than others. Some will be longer than others. So Hope you guys enjoyed the first episode. If you did, leave a like, uh, leave a comment if you want me to do a particular gun next, and I will catch you guys on the next episode. You got any questions? Leave a comment. Lads, thanks for watching. I will catch you guys later.